What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York. We are back at the Gramercy Theater, and we are here with Scott of Polyphia. Thank you so much for your time today, man. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yeah. It's so awesome to have you here. You guys played a great show on Friday, and now you're back here again. It feels a little deja vu, kind of. Yes, it does. And uh, we're going to have to, you know, not do the same tricks we do or oh. did the other day. We're going to have to mix it up a little bit. Oh, really? I'll be up both. Uh, I was there on Friday, and I'll be here again tonight, so you're not doing the same set list. Uh, well, no, the same set list. But I'm going to have to play it off because, you know, the, like, stage banter and all that shit. Yeah. I'm going to have to say, like, something else, you know, because I can't do the same jokes and stuff. Yeah. You know? Well, it was a Friday, so, you know, where everybody was in good spirits for the weekend, and now it's Monday, so you have some ammunition there. Yeah, it's now it's Monday, and everyone probably doesn't want to be alive because it's Monday or something, exactly. you know. But uh, your newest record is New Levels and New Devils, which came out um, back in uh, 2018. You're well into the record cycle now. Do you just want to talk about like how the making of the record was and the record cycle thus far? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Um, here, I can hold this for this one. This is a long one. Um, new Levels, New Devils. Let's see. Uh, well, we started writing that one. We did a few sessions over in L.A. at Tim's place. And... <clears throat> We actually ended up having to finish that one on tour. Uh, so, you know, we were <laughs> doing like the the bandwagon or the bus or whatever we had at that time. And we just set up our little computer on top of like an Axe FX and then had our guitars. And we were all cramped up in the little seat and we were just writing the guitar riffs and stuff like that um, on tour. And... Yeah, that's how we finished the album. So it was a little stressful, to say the least. But, I mean, kind of having that close deadline, I guess, really pushed the motivation to <laughs> to just finish it. I don't know. I don't know how to word this. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. But, you know, when you have, like, a close deadline like that and you're really close to it, you just get in that like completion mode you know what i mean like there's no there's no writer's block anymore it's just like just write anything get it down if it sucks scratch it start something new just like do it you know and you can only do that for so long but luckily for us it was just long enough to where we were able to like, i remember the last riff i wrote was at the end of yas the end of that song was the last riff that I wrote. The, actually, it was the last riff that was written for the whole album. And I remember thinking, like, thank God I didn't have to write any more riffs after this one because this one is a little... Yeah, I didn't think it was my best work. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Well, but yeah. Well, what I was curious, actually, is you kind of led me into the next question. Um, but, like, m mentioning that you wrote this on tour, you kind of, in a way, answered it. But, like, did, you know, writing this record and, you know, finishing it up while on tour, while under pressure, like you said, and everything, did that maybe influence the overall sound of New Levels, New Devils? Or, like, was there kind of, like, a preconceived idea that you revolved around and stuck to your guns throughout it? Um, to an extent, I think, yeah. Uh, just because... Well, for, the like, the guitar riffs, specifically. Like, uh, I usually like to take the guitar riffs home, so to speak. I usually write them at home, but I like to just kind of write them and then like don't listen to them for like a week and then come back and listen to it and change stuff that I don't like anymore. So they kind of develop into that. This time we didn't get to do that. We just had to write the riffs and like I showed it to Tim and then Clay and Clay and they were either like, yeah, that's cool, or no, let's do something else. And then I would do it again, or we would keep it, you know? So it was kind of like, you, you didn't really have a lot of time to make things set. So doing that on tour was, you know, it had that aspect to it. But as far as the theme of the album and like how it ended up sounding, um, that was certainly preconceived, because we did uh, The Most Hated before that, and that was almost like an experimental EP. Like we did, uh, we mixed like, <laughs> we kind of just tried to take like hip hop elements and blended it with our style, you know, like Renaissance and stuff like that. Like just how we would do that. But it kind of 
turned out also a little EDM-ish, I think, I guess. I know everyone who listens to hip-hop and EDM are probably like listening to me say this and saying, like, oh, my God, he does not know what he's talking about. <laughs> but that's, like, in our heads what was going on because we did Lit. All right, so the timeline here is Renaissance, the album, and then we took Light out of that song and made Lit. So we remixed that song, and now it's lit. And that was kind of like the whole EDM like shit that we tried to do. And then after that, we met Y2K, Ari. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to do something way cooler. And then he wrote the beat for Loud. And so now we have Loud, that song. And that kind of like did. <laughs> oh, distractions. I'm getting humped at in the other room. <laughs> so we have loud now. And we I remember I looked at Tim and I was like, dude, do we want to do this? Like for the whole EP? This is kind of like wild. I don't know if we can pull this off. And then that that was kind of like even more <laughs> inspiration for us to be like, yeah, let's do it. So, yeah. oh, my bad. I know I go for a long time. No, it's all good. I like it. Uh, one thing I was curious about is, though, like, you know, being that, you know, your music is obviously very solo driven and guitar driven. Like, do you like lay down the riffs and then maybe Tim would work off of the scaling and the mode after that? Like, do you guys have to collaborate together in order to write music or do you guys like write independently and then collaborate like in the final process? You know, rarely ever do we actually collaborate uh, and write together uh most of the time it's we each start our own riffs or entire ideas even in our own rooms or just like on our own in some way and then we'll show each other it and then like i'll write a riff and i'll show it to tim and then he'll add some stuff to it or usually typically what it's been lately is tim will start a guitar riff and i'll put production on it and we'll just work around that. And then eventually we can get the structure going because now we got a drum beat and like a bass line and a guitar riff. So now we can figure out what we're gonna do with the next spot of the song. Um, so we say, okay, well like maybe this will be like a good intro riff or this could be, this is good enough. It could be the hook or the chorus. So we'll kind of like build around that. And it's easier for me to visualize it with the production all lined up and laid out on the DAW and everything. Cause then I can be like, okay, here are the pieces we need to add. So I don't know. I'm a very visual person. I need to see it. Well, that just led me into my next question in order to get inspired to write, do you have to like, you know, put like yourself in a certain element or be in a certain place in order to get inspired to write or does sometimes inspiration just come out of nowhere? Uh, you know, man, that, is a really good question and i wish i had a more solid answer for it but sometimes it just comes you know uh the writing and, and the, the ideas and all that stuff it's hard because i can i can come off a tour and be like okay now i finally have time to just sit down and write in my studio and it's all comfortable and then i can't write shit, you know or other times I'm on tour and I get an idea and I just bust out my laptop and just noodle it down real quick. Um, so it just strikes whenever. But when you have to force it, you really learn how to make it the best you can. Because, you know, when you force things, it's usually not good. Yeah. But the pressure, I don't know. I, I try to find a way to work off the pressure yeah. and things like that. But most of the time... It's all good. I can I can sit down in, in my studio and like write stuff because it's comfortable. How do you know when a song is done? That's always the hardest question. When it's usually <laughs> a song is never really done, is it? <laughs> I get that answer every single time. Yeah, I, I bet. Yeah. Yep. I just interviewed um, Kenny from Typo Negative yesterday, and he said the same thing. Yeah. Well, I mean. Songs can be finished, I will say that. And for us, it's usually we're on a deadline, so let's fucking finish them. Mm -hmm. But a song is usually done for us when the last when the last guitar riff is like finalized. Like me and Tim are just listening to it and we're just like Yeah, I'm happy with that. 
And then we'll come back to it in a week and say, I'm not happy with that. But it's okay because we already, it's already getting mixed and mastered. So we have to be happy with that. So, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Sometimes it, it helps when you have a deadline, like, because then, you know, you, you don't want, this way you have like a little bit of direction. Sometimes you don't want too much creative freedom. Otherwise, you'll work on something forever. Exactly, dude. Like, I used to be that way. I, I know some people who were that way or are that way. And our bottom line is just, we just want to put out music, you know? And there are so many things on New Levels, New Devils that I would change or the most hated that I would change. But I'm glad that we put those out the, the way they exist now because now I listen back to them and say like, oh, okay, well, I would have changed that. Let me just write a new song and I'll do the idea that I had on this one. So it encourages and inspires new things to happen. So that's why you just got to push it out, dude. Yep, exactly. um, I have two more questions for you. But, uh, you know, as somebody who has seen you live, you know, a trillion times now, I think I have not missed a New York City show since I think like maybe the tour you did with Sean or something like that. But oh, hell yeah. yeah, but like one thing I was curious about is, you know, with with, you know, your crowd interaction and, you know, how the crowd moves. Like, I feel like the crowd feeds off of you and you feed off the crowd. So when you and Tim and everybody else in the band is playing live, is there a different energy that you channel into playing your material live as opposed to when you're in the studio or when you're recording or in the practice space? Or maybe is there a similar method behind the madness that applies to all of it? Completely different energy. Uh because there is energy. Uh, we used to be the band that would like, you know, we hit every note live. If we miss one note, shit's ruined, you know? Now, I've learned, because I'm so old and wise, I've learned that you're not gonna hit all the notes. And if you miss a note, that just, I, I like to think of it like this because I'm a nerd. Every time I miss a note, it adds a point to my energy bar. So if you ever come to a show and see that I'm missing lots of notes and, uh, you know, head banging real hard or going real crazy or accidentally knock my cab over, which I almost did the other night, it's probably because all those points are going into the energy bar. And that helps me put up the points in the <laughs> hit the notes bar. I don't know if this is making any sense. I visualize it in a very weird way, but I don't know. Just having that like positive thing go on in my head instead of saying like, oh, I fucked up. Now I'm like all nervous and anxious or something like going down that rabbit hole is a bad time. So I don't know as, as, as far as comparing that to the studio, it's just like it's comfortable, you know, like no one's hearing me miss notes, figuring out how to write a riff or how to play a riff, you know, but with the live performance, it's just like, I don't know. I just want to have fun. I want I want the experience to be fun. Obviously, I'm going to try to hit as many notes as I can. And sometimes I have a bad night. Other nights, most nights, I have good nights, I'll say, because all we do is tour and play the songs. You know, we should be good at them. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know if I butchered that answer hard enough. Not but, at all. Uh, no. Yeah, completely different energy yeah. to, to get down to the the answer well i forgot which song you did it for but i remember um at the show you did on friday you had like the audience like sing like the uh the the soloing part which i thought was actually awesome yeah it's kind of haunting in a way yeah you know it's funny we just started doing that this tour actually um i don't remember how we got into doing that but i just remember like you know some some shows people will sing the notes and stuff like that like as we're playing it and you can hear it because everyone's doing it. it's really loud um, so I guess that time we were just like, you know what, sing that shit. And so now what we do is we, <laughs> we ask them, I'll get on the microphone. I'll just be like, I know everybody knows the, the word, not words, but you know, the words to the song, sing them with me, you know, let's do it. You know, keep the momentum going. Let's, let's keep that high energy going and stuff like that. Cause if the crowd is having fun, I'm having fun. And sometimes I feel like if I'm having fun, they're going to think, oh, I should have fun. Yeah. You know? Well, you know what I've always said about like guitar song, especially with bands like you guys or Chan or Animals as Leaders, Intervals, etc. is like the guitar soloing is the vocals and the way that it conveys emotion and a vibe through melody. So like, sure, it's maybe a different language, but I think vocals and guitar soloing have kind of like the same purpose in the end. Yeah, man. And sometimes it's easier. Maybe not our songs because we have tons of notes. Mm -hmm. But you know, anyone can can remember the ba 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 ba. 
easy peasy. You know what I'm saying? And they know it because, you know, we've only railed that song into their brains so many times by playing it every single show since it's been released. Yeah. But, you know. And the final question I wanted to ask you is uh, just do a quick gear rundown. Are you the Ibanez user? or? Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. Look at that. This is the SLM 10. The Scotty LePage signature model for Ibanez. Um, it's really sick. Uh, it's my guitar. It's got 22 frets because I'm an adult now. Mm -hmm. And this is my DiMarzio signature pickup, the Igno. So that's uh, the guitar. And then for other gear and stuff, we're using the Axe 8 pedal board from Fractal Audio. Those are nice and fancy and special, and uh, they're cool. And sometimes I press the wrong things on them because they can do so much. But uh, they're still sick. And once I learn how to do those things, I'm like, oh, wow, I should have been doing that for the past year. And now I'm going to do it, if that makes sense. But, yeah, it's cool. And then we run those bad boys through the effects loop of a... Dark Terror amp by Orange. Um, those things are fucking awesome. And we just have the Orange cabs, all fancy cabs and stuff. Awesome. And yeah. Do you use Ibanez because it best suits the style of music that you play? Or is it just the guitar you were like, you use forever and it's just the most comfortable using? Well, dude, Ibanez is such a versatile company. You know, they got, you know, you got your S models, your RGs. And like S I would use if I wanted to play something like fucking... I don't know. Well, I guess Satriani, right? Because he fucking plays us. And then the RG and stuff was just like, it's just so, like, such a perfect guitar. I don't know. I don't know how to explain the RG. But, like, Tim and I have been playing Ibanez since, like, my first guitar ever was an Ibanez guitar um, that I bought with my own money I had saved up for. It was $300, and the Guitar Center had it on sale for $200. And I was like, well, fuck. Fuck me up, Big Daddy. Let me buy that shit. And I bought that shit. And ever since then, I don't know. Like, now they got the AZ model. The AZ model is, is so... It's like the mixture of... <sighs> Dude, I can't even explain it right now. I wish I had woken up three hours ago instead of one. But, I don't know. Just the versatility of this one guitar. It kind of feels like every Ibanez ever made into one guitar. If I had explained it, because you could still shred on it. The shreddability is quite high. And then it feels good to play. Like the roasted maple neck and everything is just, it just feels good, you know? And then this bad boy, you can hit that shit for days. Won't go out of tune. It's just nice. I don't know. And it sounds amazing too. So it's got everything. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Is there just anything else with Polyphia you would like to promote in terms of uh, tours or even some new music now that New Levels and New Devils is going to be hitting the two-year-old mark next year? Yeah, that's true, dude. Holy shit. Um, well, probably not too many things I can say yet. Uh, however, we will be coming out with a new album in the next year and some change. Probably. I don't know. Because, you know, you tell people, oh, yeah, we're going to have an album next year. And they think, oh, then, January 1st, you know, so. Yeah. And it then it ends be. up being like Tool. New album. Yeah, yeah. Or the Necrophagist album that is going to come out any day now. But, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, I mean, within the next year and a half, we'll put out. I mean, we're going to put out singles and shit before then. Though, so don't worry. The new material will be had very soon awesome. well thank you so much scott yeah, thank you man everybody scott of polyphia new levels new devils pick that up if you haven't already this is alex from heavy new york we'll see you next time